Hello everyone and uh, welcome to the Extreme Peak channel for uh, today's video I'm using Miller XMT uh, Zero R control Scratch uh, Star TIG and uh, 95 amps uh, We're gonna work on a 2 inch uh, heavy ball We're gonna do in a 6G So prep as always clean in and out uh, We're gonna do feather edge and the gap is gonna be loose 1.8 uh, the filler wire I'm using for this video is a uh, ER70S2 uh, 332 uh, That's the rod I'm gonna use I had a couple comments uh, on my uh, channel before. Oh, can you do 332? Yeah, sure uh, There was a chance so So I'm gonna use 332 And uh, we're gonna freehand root So tax one on top two on the sides so this video is gonna be root tax in all my previous videos i had a bridge tax so i'm gonna do root tack so for the root tack business as usual don't go too hot nice and slow add rod make a nice uh, solid root tack half inch white max okay once we got root in once we put the tack check for your gap if it's even all the way around if you're happy if it's consistent then you can start on your second tack a uh, good habit if you got a wedge you can stick a wedge just uh, just in case it doesn't close on you okay the same thing we're gonna put a, another root tack same thing Still 95, everything doing with 95. Okay, I put all three tacks in. The gap looks the same. We're gonna feather them out. All three tacks. And we're gonna put in a 6G position. So this video is a little bit different than all my previous 6G carbon uh, videos because usually as uh, lots of other people we put tack on the top 12, 9 and 3 o'clock but for this video I'm gonna put uh, on the bottom so we're gonna have 3, 9 and 6 o'clock and the top is gonna we're gonna leave the top open. Uh, the reason why I did this is uh, to help you guys with your start so as we all know the bottom that's uh, that's the crucial especially because it's an overhead so you want to you always uh, especially if you beginner you you struggle you know you want to have nice solid root uh, the position of your tax actually it's not important uh, they're not specified it have to be at the top or at the bottom they say it should be four tax you can be even odd tax Usually we do three tacks, and uh, for now I'm gonna do on the bottom. Uh, the most important thing is uh, that mark that I mark on that pipe, so you don't change it, you don't rotate, you don't do nothing. Okay, that's uh, that's the tack. Uh, that's the tack that's gonna be on the bottom. So you can feed from the inside if you want. You can do a back feed with 332. That shouldn't be any problem or you can go from the outside so for this video I'm gonna go from the outside and I'm just gonna dip that rod that's the ideal is uh, if you can do from one pass from the bottom all the way up to the top without stopping so cup size 8 uh, tucks and stick out usually I do I go all the way to that edge that's kind of my reference and uh, this is what I'm using for uh, for a stick out Usually on a heavy wall, that's uh, that's what I like to do. Okay, as I said, uh, freehand. This is uh, what I'm gonna do. But you can also, if you want, uh, you can you can walk the cup, whatever it's easier for you. It depends from the level of your experience. I don't. I barely change uh, cup eight. Usually, I go from root all the way to the finish on a on a two inch. If it's a bigger, heavier pipe, yeah, then I probably changing okay this is where I start I start from the outside uh, freehand uh, that uh, shot is uh, really not that clear I had some issue with my lens 
because they're like a little bit foggy. I'm dipping from the outside. I'm going to that uh, tack. I'm going to do tie in. You always pause on your tack. Pause a little bit and then just go over it. Before you go to that edge, you see it start opening and just keep adding rod. I like adding rod, as I said before in my previous videos. Uh, that's you actually see how, the amount that you actually de depositing in. Okay, we did uh, one side is done. This is the other side. You can uh, top, you can use the grinder and then just uh, grind that top. And that's the root. That's the half uh, half root. With I did one pass, no stop. Same thing on the other side. It's now now it's a little bit clearer picture. So preheat, and then just start adding rod. I like to do this technique, especially on a two inch, uh, as you actually see the amount that you putting in. If you do lay wire or if you do back feed, you might do uneven, it might build up or something. And uh, with this, with 95 amps, you can easily control that puddle. You can see the amount that you're putting in. Once you go to that tack, pause, wait for sides to open. And just go over it a little bit slow and before that end it's gonna start opening now now it's gonna start open here on the edges that this is where you start adding rod again I don't know if you can see where I'm actually adding that rod it's from the outside on the top and that just the gravity it's gonna give you nice uniform root from inside so for the tie-in same thing pause wait a little bit add some rod and then just go over it like half inch if you want okay this is the root from outside now we're gonna take a peek on the inside so one pass one side one pass other side that's that's it it should be as simple as that that's why I think that uh, tack on the bottom should be helpful for you guys, especially for beginners. It's gonna give you a nice solid start point, and just follow that, uh, just follow that thickness. Uh, that shouldn't be any problem. So for the hat pass, uh, same thing. Uh, treat, uh, I mean, same rod, 332. Uh, the amps, 140. And I'm just gonna walk the cup for hat pass and for all other passes 140 keep that wire in the puddle no need to push just keep it there and just stretch that puddle nice and slow no need to rush importance of cleaning prepping it's a crucial especially for uh, 70s2 rod as you know that rod is uh, specially designed for uh, for dirty applications and that rod can be dirty sometimes it's uh, harder to control especially if you didn't do proper prep that it's gonna just make your life a little bit difficult you know it's gonna be harder to manipulate with that puddle that notch on the top you see that's from a cutting torch Okay, same thing uh, for the second pass, same rod, same amperage, 140, it's gonna be one, uh, one pass, just stretch it nice and wide, Try to maintain the same amount. Just uh, basically just keep that rod in that puddle. What I'm doing right now, I'm just uh, creating solid, uh, nice ground for uh, for.
for a bigger rod and I'm gonna run a little bit harder than this okay that's our second pass our first pass of fill always clean you can use the buffing wheel clean between passes I, I did in the beginning later I didn't okay as I said bigger rod 532 70s2 we're gonna start at the bottom one bead and then I'm gonna go at the top and uh, this is how we're gonna do uh, build that uh, do some uh, build up k180 okay, 180 for uh, 532 I think that's ideal amperage works good for me it might work good for you as well it's really I like 180 you can even go harder I don't know maybe 200 it's really the that amperage it's good for 532 really melting that rod really nice as you can see it's a it's a really it's a really clean bottle which is good easier to control easier to see if you got any impurity or something that's why it's good uh, to clean every pass as we said before, 70s2 is uh, famous for uh, lots of impurity, especially if your application that you're welding on it, if it's dirty and, uh, and greasy, then it's gonna be even even harder. Oh, this is second uh, second bead at the top. I hate to rush. Tungsten always sharp, as I said always. Try not to try not to put uh, tungsten in your puddle. You don't want to have tungsten inclusion. Even though this is a bent test, it's not an X-ray, but still good habit. Try to add more rod, not tungsten. Five thirty two is a uh, is a perfect perfect rod. Once you start filling, it really feels start filling really fast. It doesn't take long to do fill to flash. Definitely, you don't want to use three thirty two and filling all the way around. And it's gonna take you lots of times, and you're just gonna burn your hand. And yeah, no need to do. Okay, I speed up the video a little bit uh, faster. It really doesn't take long uh, with the 532 to fill it up. Now we're going to do a couple more passes with the 532 to fill to flash. Okay, this side I did uh, three passes. It's uh, pretty much fill to flash. I got three passes on this side and I got two passes on the other side. I was just going a little bit wider on the other side. Okay, so for the cap, uh, for the cap, I'm using 332 and amperage uh, 115. Uh, one little tip for capping: uh, after you finish fill to flash, you want to wait to cool down. You don't want to go when it's uh, still hot. Uh, it's gonna be painful for you, and you're not gonna control that powder bottle really well okay this is the first uh, bit of uh, cap we're gonna go four passes here it's gonna be one two three and four that's gonna be the final pass over there as I said uh, before uh, first and final pass is uh, most important 
for the first pass you want to have nice straight edge as you can keep it straight you can uh, first pass make it looks nice and your second pass and third you can have some uh, little mistakes but basically you covering you overlapping that first pass uh, with 25% uh, of that bead you gotta focus on the, on that edge keep that edge straight have a consistent steps That's why it's important to clean each pass between passes after each bead. Pipes getting hot, all those uh, impurities that just go up on the surface, goes in your puddle, and then uh, just uh, makes it a little bit uh, difficult to control. Okay, this is gonna be a third pass right here. Same thing overlapping 25% over second pass everything's the same 332 116 amps nice and slow no rush When you're doing third pass, uh, you want to leave some room at the top. You got to calculate a little bit, you know, for all those passes. You want them to look nice. It's good for you. It's good for uh, whoever is uh, your examiner. We'll remember you for next time. Get some, some credit on file. As for the three passes, so the first pass, as I said, it, it's crucial because the straight edge, you want to have that straight edge on the pipe. Second pass, same thing, you want to have that straight, pe uh, uh, straight edge on your first pass. And the same thing on the third pass. You want to have that straight edge on this, on the, when it's overlapping with the second pass. So with those three passes, you, you only focus the most on only one edge. But uh, for the final pass, you focus on both sides, on both edges, on the pipe side and on, a, on your bead. Same thing, you're overlapping 25% and uh, once you start your bead, try to maintain, try to be consistent. You don't want to have a Saza looking edge on, on the side. That's why this uh, amperage and the 332, it's good. It, don't, it doesn't get really too hot. So you can nice, uh, you can have a nice and good control over your puddle. Yeah, I hope uh, this video is gonna help you guys. Uh, I was reading uh, lots of comments and I even got some emails. Uh, like for me, I'm trying to do beginner friendly, but uh, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, for me, beginner friendly doesn't mean it's gonna be beginner friendly for you. Because uh, it, might be, it might be difficult. Why not but uh, the quality is most important and guys uh, the, the, the rule of thumb if you happy everybody's happy raise your standards that's that's it thanks guys for watching and uh, see you in the next one bye